So before I just uh, kick off, what's been the best thing about the last four weeks? And don't say sleep. <laughs> on. Field? Yeah, that would come from somebody in green. The blues, are, blues and, blues and greys agree with that? <laughs> That's good. That's diversity. That's great. Sorry? Yeah. Friendships. Good. Building them. That is... That's why we're here. That is one of the core reasons why we're here at ADFA. Don't give up on that. Yes. Sorry? Civic. Right. Now, here is the best piece of advice you are going to get all time. Nothing, nothing good happens in Civic after midnight. <laughs> I guarantee it. Avoid it. Stay away from it. 90 5% of the issues that we have here, and I say 95% because I just can't put my hand on my heart and say 100%, involve alcohol and late nights. All right? So when I say nothing good happens in civic after midnight, that's true. You are not going to meet the love of your life after your 10th beer in Civic after midnight. It is not going to happen. And anything else you want after midnight is not going to be enjoyable anyway and you won't remember it, so forget about it. Lead and excel. That is not to follow and to be average. I want you to be as good as you can be. The friendships I built then still exist now. The friendships you're building on a day-to-day -day basis here now will exist in 30 years' time. The difference between you and me is 30 years. Some of you are going to look this good when you're 30 years later. Okay? <laughs> so remember, that is why you're here. The friendships that you're building, those relationships that you're building, the good ones, are why you are here. W. Crest. I want it to be very, very clear from day one. To graduate from ADFA, there is an academic requirement. There is a military requirement. There is a cultural competence requirement. And then there's an officer attributes requirement. I tend to run the officer attributes and the cultural competence into the military bit, and I talk about academic and military graduation. To be a graduate, an ad for grad, from here, you have to pass both of those. But I want you to be as good as you can be at both of those. So, your responsibility, officer plus academics, officer bit, military. Now, being an officer is more about what's happening here than your physical abilities. You have to be physically capable, physically fit. I'm not saying you don't. But the difference between you and somebody that's just going to charge up a hill with a rifle is the fact that you're going to be leading and thinking about it and not just reacting and acting. I need you to think more about what's between your ears than all the other things. I, I do it with the army. I won't do it this time. Have a think for the army people in the room. Have a think about all of the previous RMC graduates. Did they all look the same? Were they all six foot two, built across the shoulders like this and could press 150 kilos because they drink protein powder for lunch? No. Right? A very diverse group of people past RMC. A very diverse group of people lead the Australian uh, sorry, the Royal Australian Navy, and a very diverse group of people lead and run the Australian Air Force. It's the diversity that gives us that strength. So my philosophy, values, standards, discipline. What are our values? Right, they're not a poster. Think them, live them, breathe them. They're not just something we put up on a wall. It's what is expected of you. Courage, 
respect, integrity, service, and professionalism. They encompass who we are as an ADF, but in particular who we are as trainee officers at ADFA. How are you already interacting with the people around you? Are you making fun of somebody because of where they come from, how they talk, what part of the country they do, what colour they are, what their background is, what they eat, what time they get up, what their haircut looks like? All of that sort of thing is unacceptable behaviour. Because every, the, what we got in this room is a very diverse population that we need in the ADF and other country services to excel. We need diversity. I do not know what the CO knows about fighting. Right? So why would we not have the two of us? Just because she wears a green, she's in the army, is a female, why is that any worse than what I am? It's not. And the same goes for everyone in here. Okay? And it will not be tolerated here. Unacceptable behaviour is not tolerated here. Now, what I'm hoping that happens, if somebody feels like they've been offended at some point, raise it. Hey, I really didn't like what you said. Can you not do that? What should the response be? Oh, sorry, didn't mean to offend. Yes, I won't do that again. So have the moral courage to stand up and say, I don't like that. Or if you see it happening to somebody else, have the moral courage to stand up and say something. And then if it gets too far, that's when we have to step in. And when we have to step in, the outcome is not necessarily as good as what you would like it to be. One of the challenges that you will find here is through your three years, there will be times where you are feeling under pressure, whether it be academic, military, relationship, whatever it turns out to be, you will feel like you're under pressure. Resilience is about being able to respond back to that pressure, to bounce back. There is several times throughout my career where I have failed at getting to the standard that I wanted to get at and I got knocked, but I got back up again, and I had another go. I didn't get bitter about it. I got better. What are you going to do? Regardless of what it is that knocks you, how are you going to respond? That's resilience. How is the people around you going to respond with you? When you see somebody struggling, helping them respond and get better actually builds their resilience and builds yours. You will need resilience to graduate from here, and I can guarantee you will need resilience as a leader within the ADF. Talk to your DOs about it, the types of things that you need to be able to respond to and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're sitting on a patrol boat in the Arafua Sea doing a boarding party and you see really bad things occur, where is your resilience going to come from? You need to start building that now. When you're on a patrol in Afghanistan or Iraq or on a flight over the top of it and you've just dropped a weapon on a target somewhere, where is your resilience going to come from to respond back from that? It starts now. So the shock of capture when we got you day one is part of building that resilience. The fact that there's still some glazed eyes in here at the moment means shock of capture is not over yet. There is no entitlement to success. The average ATAR last year in the first years was 91.7. The average ATAR this year, I believe on a rough calculation, is higher. That doesn't mean you will be successful. What it means is you have the capacity to learn and learn well. Use that. Okay? You're not going to get it given to you. This might be like it was for me when I failed a flight in my flying training, the first time I'd failed something. That was tough. I hadn't failed anything before. This might be the time where you do. What are you going to do? How are you going to respond to that? You have to work hard now. Start now. 
as I said before, don't wait to the two and a half year point where you go, hmm, I might have to think about that leadership stuff. Because next year I'm going to be the administrative officer of number 77 squadron and uh, I'm going to have about 20 people working for me. How do I do leadership? Too late. And they will know. When you have people working for you, they know. Attributes. Graduation attributes. Have you spoken about those? Anybody, anybody give me the first one? Sorry, one, one person. Student of life. I add a bit onto that. Student of life for life. I want you to want to learn for your entire life. Because the more you want to learn, the better you will get, the better leader you will be. Student doesn't mean sit in a classroom and have all the information given to you. It actually means seek it out. Go and find it. Right? Next one. That's, I'll, I'm going to do that one last. Okay? But yes, that is one of them. Yes? Citizen of virtue. That doesn't mean moral purity. Okay? And citizen of virtue is not just about focused on you and being the best that you can be as a person. It's actually focused on other people. What can I do as a citizen to help others? Whether that be get through their PFT, study for their engineering exam, go and help others in a charity. That's the citizen of virtue that we're looking for. Third one, principled leader. I can guarantee you, if you do not make your decisions as a leader based on principles, you will fail. So, student of life for life, citizen of virtue, principled leader, military professional, in that order. I could grow people here as leaders, I would grow them in that order because I know the outcome would be good.